Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to England once again for the first time in what feels like a good little while. Now we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel a number of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the last few years, a few different styles, but I think it is fair to say that this brewery are best known for their different kinds of New England hazy, whatever you want to call them, IPAs. But they have been doing a number of Imperial styles and sour beers in recent times from what I understand so we need to have a little look at some of the sour beers because I haven't tried any of those but the stouts I can say are very very good but the beer we're going to have a look at today is one of their latest releases uh, as of July 2023 I've heard this one is a very nice example of that style and it's a style that we haven't had from these guys actually in some time so needless to say I'm very curious to see what this one is going to have in store for us hopefully it's another good beer Hopefully it makes for an interesting review, and as always, I hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this one as well. So, uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head to Nottingham down in England. And since we're going to Nottingham, a massive shout out uh, to my friend Billy Rag of Raggy's Beer, Wines and Spirits Review. We'll be seeing him on the channel at some point in the next few weeks, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Lovely guy, and I'll put the link to his channel in the video description below as well, of course. But we're going to have a look at a beer from one of his local breweries. So for this one, we are going to go to Neon Raptor Brewing Company once again. And we're having a look at the Suburban Hercules. So this one comes in at 9% ABV. It's a New England hazy imperial triple, whatever you want to call it, IPA. And this is another beer that I bought at the Caledonian Craft Beer Merchant in Dunfermline. So yeah, he always gets a good selection of Neon Raptor stuff, actually. One of his favourite uh, English breweries from what I understand but uh, yeah very curious to see what it's going to be like we've had some really good New England IPAs from these guys in the past but this one is supposed to be very very nice so let's crack on and see what it's going to have in store for us so as always with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting though just fast forward all the usual links can be found in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Neon Raptor Brewing Company before and we will hopefully add more onto that list in the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the support that you give is massively appreciated and remember you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system so just go in there use the little search bar put your hometown state county whatever you like if I've reviewed beers from the area that you search for they will pop up failing that though you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries you'll find this one in the English playlist along with a number of other things and we will be adding to that over the next little while so keep your eyes peeled for that but you can check out the playlist of beers from other countries as well but like I said cool to return to these guys after what feels like a good long while but yeah let's go on to my brewery notes then and I'll tell you a wee bit about Neon Raptor so Neon Raptor Brewing Company are originally from Derby but they're now based in Nottingham and the company started out as the home brewing experimentations of Adam Henderson so he had participated in and won Brewdog's local home brewing competition back in 2015 and this really inspired him to think about turning professional but a year later he joined forces with Tom Ainsley and Josh Meller both of whom were former postmen and they started up the company officially so the name Neon Raptor is apparently taken from Adam's hypothetical glam rock band but they had originally gone with the name Neon Tiger but this was apparently too close to a well-known beer brand I'm guessing it'll be the Tiger beer from Singapore but uh, originally they started off as a gypsy brewery and they were brewing very small batches of about 300 litres in early 2016 but then the following year in 2017 they started producing using a 1000 litre brew kit in Burton-upon-Trent and they started producing in the Snamton Market area in Nottingham in 2018. They opened up a tap room later that year as well and since then they've just been expanding the infrastructure of the brewery and producing more different beers. I believe they've got another tap room somewhere else as well if I remember correctly but I, I may well be wrong on that I'm sure one of the English beer tubers will be in the comment section below to correct me if needs be but uh, yeah as of July 2023 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced around 265 different kinds of beer like I said I would say this brewery are best known for their different kinds of New England hazy whatever you want to call them IPAs but they have done a number of uh, other styles over the years they're getting quite well known for their kind of big imperial pastry stouts but also for their big fruity juicy smoothie and pastry sour beers as well actually 
But yeah, that is everything I can really tell you about uh, Neon Raptor Brewing Company. I'm sure Raggy, of course, will be able to tell you a lot more. But we will see about doing an out and about video in Nottingham at Neon Raptor's Tap Room in a few weeks' time. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to, to do this video now, was to give you guys a little bit of a heads up for that. So uh, yeah, keep your eyes peeled. But yeah, I think that is everything we need to say in terms of history of the brewery for Nottingham, uh, for, uh, for Neon Raptor, sorry. So if you want to learn more, you can check out the brewery website, follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So yeah, let's go on then and actually have a little look at the beer itself. So as you can see, this is one of the lovely black cans that you quite often find from uh, you quite often find from Neon Raptor. The, I thought it was mainly the stouts they did in these, right enough. Uh, I think the one, the, the last one we had on a can like this was Centaur Army, and that was a big Imperial style. It was very, very nicely done. But you can see plain black top on the can there. As I said earlier, this one is a nine percent. Uh, New England Hazy Imperial Triple, whatever you want to call it, IPA. It says on the back here, to get what you want in life, you must sometimes undertake a number of arduous tasks. This triple IPA is loaded with Sabro for coconut vibes and backed with further tropical notes from Mosaic, Chinook uh, and Citra. So uh, yeah, four hops in this one then, Sabro, Mosaic, Citra and Chinook, all of which are American. Uh, Sabro is about 16% alpha acid, it gives you this lovely kind of bright tangerine orangey note but also quite a distinctive coconut as it says. Mosaic about 14% alpha acid, lovely kind of bright tangerine note, little touch of earthiness. Citra 14% alpha acid once again, big big juicy kind of mango notes and quite often a little bit of a kind of lemon and limey character in a New England IPA and then Chinook is about 14% alpha acid as well. Big kind of grapefruity notes but also uh, a number, uh, you know, also a big kind of piney resinous character as well. So yeah, this one should be quite nice. Uh, like I said earlier, I bought this one at the Caledonian Craft Beer Merchant in Fermland. I think I paid about £8 for this one, just because it seemed a bit of a beast and it was highly rated. So I thought, you know, bugger it, why not? So uh, yeah, this should be nice. Let's get this guy out into the glass and see how we get on. The Suburban Hercules, a 9% New England triple IPA from Neon Raptor in Nottingham. Let's get this guy out and we'll see. Oh, it's maybe not in New England actually. Hmm. This one may turn out to be more of an American IPA. We can see that. Um, yeah, it does contain oats and wheat, which is why I thought it was going to be a New England hazy. But uh, yeah, it actually looks as if it may, may well be more of an American IPA. And what I would refer to as an American IPA is one that's kind of simply somewhere in the middle of the two. Uh, but yeah, before the head disappears on this one, we'll just have a wee quick look at that. I've got most of the beer out and into the glass at the moment. You can see it's poured with about a half finger of a frothy. I would say slightly cream coloured head there. You can see there's some kind of medium sized bubbles on the surface there and some lighter kind of foamy ones just going further up but it does look pretty damn nice actually. Um, but uh, yeah not too much in the way of visible carbonation in this one. One or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass and a few little ones going up toward the bottom of the head which incidentally is just gradually fading away to be a thinner foamy layer and then round the edge of the glass you can see there's a little bit more of a kind of thicker ring just lingering there. But in terms of the colour of this beer, if we shine the light through this, I would say that it's a lovely kind of mango juice yellow colour, this one. So it looks pretty nice. But in terms of the level of haze of this beer, it's not the soupiest and gloopiest of IPAs that you're going to come across. But remember, the colour of your beer depends on a few things. One, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise and thus you get a darker colour of beer. But any barrel ageing that you do or adjuncts you put into the beer will uh, affect the colour of it too. But uh, yeah, in terms of New England IPAs or any type of IPA for that matter, you don't often have to, uh, to care about that. But uh, yeah, the level of haze in beers usually depends on the oak content, wheat content and to a degree what yeast you use and that can vary from brewery to brewery 
and recipe to recipe. But we were talking about West Coast IPAs versus New England IPAs a minute ago. So for me, the main difference between a West Coast IPA and a New England one would be the use of oats and wheat. Um, so West Coast IPAs tend to use uh, only barley malt, but it's not unheard of to use a little bit of wheat or a little bit of oat in them. So they tend to give you a more kind of oily uh, mouthfeel, if you like, whereas New England IPAs use quite a lot of wheat and quite a lot of oats, and that's responsible for the kind of smooth, ha kind of creamy mouthfeel and the hazy sort of things. West Coast IPAs are, of course, a bit more bitter because they also use early edition hopping, uh, but uh, New England IPAs tend to be less bitter and more kind of bright in their green components because they rely mainly on late edition and dry hopping. But uh, yeah, that gives you a brief rundown of the styles. But what I was saying in terms of it being an American IPA, usually they are somewhat in the middle. They have a little bit of wheat and a little bit of oat and a little bit more bitterness. So um, yeah, they're kind of in the middle of the New England and the West Coast style. And just going from the appearance of this beer, I've got a feeling that this one probably has to be classed as an American IPA. But anyway, that's everything we need to say about the appearance of this beer. I think we can go on and have a wee look at the aroma then and see what this one is all about. I do apologise if the lighting in this video is a little bit bad, I'm just trying to figure it out. So, yeah, we'll see how it works out in the end. But aroma-wise, this is a very nice smelling beer. It's kind of interesting, actually, because just on first sniff, it actually reminds me a little bit of the likes of The Alchemist and uh, Lawson's Finest Liquids. New England IPAs back in the day were, of course... Uh, a little bit more kind of farmhousey and yeasty compared to the ones that we have in Europe now, which are very, very creamy and wheaty and oaty and stuff like this. This one actually does remind me of the more old school New England IPAs, come to think of. It's got a bit more of a kind of farmhousey, kind of yeasty character for me. Um, so, yeah, this should be really interesting, actually. So, yeah, a little bit of a more farmhousey, yeasty sort of thing. But it does come across as having the kind of lower bitterness and things that you would expect of a New England IPA. Um, and you've got lovely juicy fruitiness in there, a little bit of sweetness in the malt base as well. But um, yeah, this is going to be quite interesting actually. This is quite different uh, from what we've had from Neon Raptor before in the past. But let's break it down and just describe the aroma a bit more in depth before we actually taste the thing then. So the backbone of the beer for me, it's absolutely got a little bit of that lovely kind of fresh wholemeal brown bready bread crust in there and I really like how that goes together so yeah lovely wholemeal brown bready bread crust in the backbone there a little bit of a kind of Jacob's cream cracker sort of vibe to it as well tiny little bit of woodiness too but then on top of that you start to get a more you get a little bit of a kind of wholemeal brown bread there's a wee bit of a fresher white bread in there too, but you are getting some of the kind of oiliness uh, in the malt base that you might expect of a West Coast IPA. Um, so above the kind of white bread, there's a little bit of that kind of biscuity type note, you know, like McVitie's digestive biscuit. And you do have a wee bit of that. I wouldn't go as far as saying caramel, to be honest with you. And for me, West Coast IPAs can lean two ways. They can be a bit more biscuity or bready, or they can be a little bit more kind of um, oily and caramel. It just depends. This one, the, the kind of West Coasty type notes that you get out of this are a little bit more kind of biscuity. And the sort of more concentrated sweetness you get out of this beer is like a very oily, concentrated uh, McVitie's digestive biscuit type syrup. It's very much like that, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. So for me, that's really quite interesting. In, uh, in this one. Mm. But I think that covers everything we need to say about the malt base, to be honest with you. There is a little bit of wheaty bitiness in the back of the nose. You can smell a little bit of the smoothness from the oats as well. And in New England IPAs, remember, oats are usually a very good indicator of how fresh your beer is. The drier they smell, the older the beer is, the, the creamier they smell, the younger the beer is, at least in my experience. And this one, it has a mixture of creaminess and a mixture of dryness too. But that may well just be because the oats are less prominent in this one. I think this is a more barley malt leaning beer rather than anything else. Uh, but yeah, I think that's everything we need to say about the uh, the malt base and the aroma. But on the, uh, the hoppy side of things then, the green component, this one 
is quite nice. You've got a little bit of depth to the green component, but at the same time you've got the brightness. So remember with IPAs we have three kinds of hopping. You have early addition hopping, which takes place uh, in the first hour of the warp boil, usually. We'll use a 90 minute uh, warp boil as our model, but yeah, early addition hopping takes place within the first hour of the warp boil. That gives you mainly bitterness in your flavour, and it gives you a deeper, danker aroma. Late addition hopping within the last half hour of the warp boil. Little bit of bitterness, but mainly flavour and aroma actually and then in the aroma it's going to give you a brighter um, kind of green component there and then later uh, dry hopping sorry which takes place after the warp boil is complete that's all flavor and aroma and again that gives you at least a more kind of bright uh, aroma rather than being kind of deep and dank um, but yeah the green component in this one is a mixture you do get a little bit of that depth and dankness which I'll be guessing comes from the Chinook probably the Chinook is being used as the, the early edition hop in this one so there is a little touch of earthiness in there too, which will come from the mosaic, I would think. You have got a wee bit of that kind of piney resinous note from the from the Chinook, definitely. But all of these hops can give you a little bit of a kind of big spicy floral aromatic sort of thing. And there is that there too. And you do have a nice little bit of a more kind of zesty, grassy uh, component coming out of this one. So yeah, the aroma of this beer for me is pretty... Um, is really quite interesting from that perspective. Um, yeah. So green component in this one is quite nice, but not too deep and dank. A little bit of de depth and dankness to it, but not overly much. Yeah. So I think we can move on to the fruity side of things. The fruity side of things, if you know these hops, is kind of what you'd expect. There's a lot of kind of oily, tangerine character, both from the Sabro and from the... Uh, uh, from the Sabro and from the Mosaic in this one. So, yeah. The way that that goes together, I think, is um, is really quite nice. I guess a big thumbs up from me in that particular regard. But, um, yeah. I think... Behind that, there's a little bit of a grapefruity character, which will be both the Citra and the... Uh, the, the Chinook giving you that, so you can get a little bit of the grapefruit character, but other than that, I get this kind of oily, mango-y note, and there is a wee touch of a lemon limey note, but you're getting the kind of coconutty, pina colada type thing from the Sabro that's just sitting under everything else. Um, so yeah, you can smell that kind of pina colada, orangey, coconutty sort of thing on the front of the nose, but then an oilier tangerine from the Mosaic, and yeah, grapefruit from Citroën, Chinook in a more oily, mango and passion fruity kind of thing uh, out of this one. So, uh, yeah, aroma wise, this beer goes together uh, really, really nicely. Um, yeah, it's quite interesting this one. It is. It really comes across as more of a kind of American IPA than um, either being too West Coast or too New England. But we'll just need to have a look at it and, and see. We'll be able to tell from the flavour, I'm sure. But, um, yeah, as I always say, take a bit of time to ponder over the aroma before you try the beer. But we are going to have a look at this one now. So, yeah, this is the Suburban Hercules, a 9% New England triple IPA from Neon Raptor Brewing in Nottingham in England. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanger, Skull, cheers. Yeah, I have to say, it's pretty nice. I mean, it is definitely American IPA. I think stylistically, absolutely, it's, it, it can be classed as American IPA. Um, it has got a wee bit more bitterness to it. It's got a little bit more of a kind of big, it's got a bit of, it's kind of balanced in the green component between being quite bright, but having a little bit of dankness to it. So yeah, it sits on the fence between the New England and West Coast in that kind of region. I don't know, the mountain IPAs from Colorado, as they called them, where uh, you quite often found ones like this. But yeah. The way this one goes together, though, is really quite nice. And I would say when you start off with it, it has a bit more West Coast character in the beginning. 
but then you start to get a wee bit more of a um, you start to get a little bit more of a kind of New England character into the aftertaste but yeah then you get more bitterness too but whatever they've done with this one we can, we can argue about the, the exact style of this beer all day the question should always be is it a nice beer and I would say yes with this one I think they've done a good job so thumbs up to, uh, to Neon Raptor with this one but let's try and break it down and describe it for you a wee bit more in depth we'll start in the middle third of the palette as we always do So, backbone of the beer. Um, the middle third of your palate uh, in this beer then, the backbone is absolutely a little bit of that. I'd say it's more of a kind of fresh, white bready, sort of hedgehog roll kind of bread crust. Absolutely a little bit like that. It's almost as if it's got a little bit of the flour fresh on it from the bakery. So yeah, a little bit of that going on. Above that, you get a kind of, there is a slight layer of kind of, it's almost like a Jacob's Cream crackery type note, like a very slightly drier type thing. And then further forward toward the front of that middle third of your palette, you get a little bit more of a kind of woody type character coming out of it. So yeah, a wee bit of that going on in there. Above that, there's a bit of a kind of wholemeal brown bready type note. Um... And the bre the wholemeal brown bready layer is kind of thinner and a wee bit more kind of crisp and things, which is nice. So yeah, a little bit of a more kind of wholemeal brown bready type character in there. But then above that, it very quickly, the wholemeal brown bread I should point out, um, it is quite minimal, it comes out a bit more into the aftertaste, but then yeah, above that you're getting more of a kind of white bready character coming out of this one. Uh, and the white bready layer is actually a bit lighter and more fluffy, and you can feel there's a slight layer of a kind of densifying wheaty character coming out of this one. Wheat always densifies the bready character in the beer for me, and above that you can feel just a little bit of the smooth oatiness going down the middle line of your tongue, and it just gets a little bit drier toward the uh, the edge of the palette too. But in the dead centre of that middle third of your palette you can feel there's a little bit, there's a little kind of concentration there of uh, that kind of, you know, more, a little bit of that kind of McVitie's digestive biscuit type concentration that I was talking about in this one. So um, yeah, you can feel that more concentrated biscuit syrup in the middle, the dead centre of your palate, then as you move further out from that you get a wee bit more kind of, um, you do get a little bit more of a kind of crisp McVitie's digestive biscuit, which as I say, I do quite like. So yeah, beyond that, I don't think there's too much to say about that middle third of your palate then. It is, I think stylistically, I think that middle third of the palate really is one of the the key things that define this as an American IPA, the fact that it has a good little bit of the breadiness and the smoothness of the New England, but it's got a little bit of the more kind of biscuity, caramelly type thing of um, of the West Coast, and that for me really makes it kind of sit on the fence there. But I think that quite accurately describes the middle third of the palate in this beer. So let's go on to the back third of the palate then. As I've always said, uh, the back third of the palate will give you similar flavours uh, but just in different intensities and generally speaking you'll get more dry and bitter flavours further back on the palate you'll get sweeter flavours further forward actually so yeah bear that in mind with this one on the um, yeah on the back third of the palate then you've got uh, the base layer there you've got the bread crusty character which is a little bit drier and more kind of uh, is a little bit drier and things then above that You've got a wee bit more of the kind of crackery note as well. Then you've got the wholemeal kind of brown bready character above that, which feels a little bit lighter and a little bit more airy. Then you've got the white bready character sitting above that, which again is lighter and more airy. And then above that, you've got the kind of wheaty. You can feel the wheat just kind of topping off that back third of your palate. And the wheat on the back third of the palate does show you just that little bit of uh, kind of bitiness and things, which is, is quite nice. So yeah, that goes together quite nicely in this beer, I have to say, so a thumbs up from me. So 
So, um, above the white, above the white, the above the kind of wheaty notes, then you start to get a little bit of the more yeasty character coming out of this beer. So there is a little bit of a kind of lighter, more farmhousey brown bready character coming out of this beer. Um, so yeah, you've got this kind of farmhousey crackery, woody, white bready character in there and it almost just feels as if it's wrapped in a little bit of honeycomb. I always get honeycomb uh, when it comes to these more yeasty characters in the white uh, I always get a more kind of honeycomb uh, yeah I get a little bit of honeycomb when it comes to these uh, the more yeasty characters in these beers so I do like that but yeah you can definitely feel on the back third of the palate the flavour is taller and as you come further forward into the middle third of your palate it just kind of condenses down and squashes together that little bit more. So um, yeah, I think that covers the malty and yeasty side of this beer. Let's go on to the green component then, and the hoppy side of things. Now I would say as well, this beer is not gonna blow the head off you in terms of bitterness, and that's another reason why I would describe this as an American IPA rather than West Coast, although the more modern iterations of West Coast really have yeah less bitterness in them compared to what the style used to, but anyway. So, in the back corners of the, uh, of the palette, you get a little touch of earthiness there. Then as you move further forward, the earthiness spreads forward a little bit, but then you get a bit of a deeper, danker pine resin there from the Chinook. The earthiness, of course, is coming from the mosaic. But yeah, as you move further forward, you can feel a bit of that deeper, danker pine resin. And as you reach the front corners of the palette, you get a little bit more of a kind of floral, aromatic sort of thing coming out of this one. But then round the front curve of the tongue, it's a little bit of a lighter, more grassy type character that uh, that comes out of this one so yeah the way the beer goes together is quite uh, quite nice in that regard you've got quite an oily green component to this one actually which I do quite like so a little bit more reminiscent of West Coast in that case but as I say not overly uh, bitter so let's look at the front third of your palate then and the fruity side of things so we'll do that The front third of your palate is quite interesting in this one because you get a little bit more of a, you can feel the, the in that border region between front third and middle third of your palate, you get a little bit of bready build up and a little bit of brown bread in the base and a bit more of a white bready character above, but then the base of that front third of your palate is a little bit more, kind of, uh, you've got a little bit of a more, I would say, um, Kind of bread, you've got a little bit of that more kind of bread crusty base in there, a bit of the brown bread, and then a bit of the smooth white bread. You can feel the wheat kind of smoothing out that base on the front 30 palette, too. But then above that, you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just uh, roll their way out of the beer. So for me, the fruity esters are kind of what you'd expect if you know these hops. At the back of that front 30 palette, there's a bit more of a kind of intense grapefruit sort of thing, and as you move further forward, it kind of it sort of mellows out a little bit. Uh, it mellows out a little bit and gives you a wee bit more of a kind of, I would say, yeah, you get the stronger grapefruit then as it, you mellow, it mellows out as you come forward, you get a wee bit of a more kind of pungent passion fruit and as you move toward the middle of that front third of your palate, you get a bit more of the kind of mango and things. But then as you move into the front half, of that front third of your palate. You can feel the sabro giving you this kind of coconutty sort of thing, and as you reach the very kind of front tip of your tongue, you've got a bit more of that lemon limey character which will be coming from the citra, especially when you have it in a slightly sweeter malt base like this. But above all of that, you're getting this oily orange tangerine type thing, which is both the sabro and the mosaic giving you that. Um, so yeah, the fruity character in this beer for me overall is quite balanced between more citrusy and kind of tropical if you like, but it does lean a little bit more toward the citrusy end of the spectrum. So, on top of that, you have, um, as I say, on top of that, you've got a really nice, um, just a little bit of coconut that's kind of lingering there into the aftertaste, and that is one of the characteristics of, uh, of Sabro, of course, Talus will give you a wee bit of that too which I believe is a daughter hop of Sabro, but um, yeah, the way this one goes together is quite nice, but stylistically, like I say, it has a wee touch of New England to it, but it leans more and more 
toward the kind of west coasty type things but again that I would say that's one of the definitions or uh, that is the definition of a, um, an American IPA if you like I do like how that kind of pieces together um, yeah interesting stuff so something different from Neon Raptor actually but yeah in terms of the mouthfeel then to round off this review for me um, Yeah, I would say that this one, it's quite, um, it is quite, kind of, it's push, it's mid-bodied, maybe pushing toward the top end of mid-bodied. It's not too thick, this beer, I think that's fair to say. So kind of mid-bodied, smooth carbonation, it has a little bit of creaminess in the mouthfeel and a little bit of oiliness too, you'd expect that from an American IPA. In terms of IBUs, I think this one is sitting around the kind of 50 or maybe 60 IBU mark. I don't get too much bitterness out of this one, in honesty. The Maltby's, as we said, has a little bit of kind of graininess and dryness underneath. There's a bit of smoothness in the middle and a wee bit of kind of sweetness on the top. And then you have, um, above that, you have a little bit of a... You've got a little bit of a more... Kind of, I would say, yeah, the biscuit you note know, gives you a wee bit of that kind of dry sweetness into the aftertaste too, and more of the dryness comes out further on as you go. But the fruitiness in this beer, as I say, it kind of is quite citrusy and quite pungent almost. Um, the further into it that you go, but I do like how that uh, how that kind of pieces together. So yeah, more kind of pungent uh, type citrusy note, but a little bit of a more oily orange as well lingering there with this one overall this is a really interesting beer this has made me think a little bit more about the kind of you know the american ipa versus the new england of the west coast but yeah i mean neon raptor have done a really interesting job with this one and it's cool to try one of their more another one of their kind of black can releases if you like so yeah i think we can leave it at that for this one this was the suburban hercules a nine percent american uh triple ipa as i would now call it having tasted it uh, from Neon Raptor Brewing Company in Nottingham down in England. So, uh, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Neon Raptor Brewing Company as well. And we will, no doubt, return to these guys again at some point in the very near future. But until then, Slanja, Scott, cheers, check out my social media. Check out Neon Raptor social media and do check out my good friend Billy, Billy Rag, Raggy as we call him, of Raggy's Beer, Wines and Spirits Review. And you'll be seeing him on the channel at some point soon and also an out and about video to the at the uh, Neon Raptor uh, taproom in Nottingham. So until then, Slanjit, Scott, cheers, thanks for watching and I will catch you guys later.